An epiphany during a trail ride helps a man understand his place in the world and among horses. Settle in for a profound episode of Barn Stories. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prince, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. I love the essay in this episode for so many reasons. For starters, the writer describes in gorgeous detail all the elements of the perfect trail ride. One where the horses, companionship, weather, and even the angle of the sunlight combines to produce a moment in time where everything is right with the world. It's easy to not notice these moments, but to have a writer describe one so beautifully reminds us to keep looking for them during our own trail rides and lives. This writer has an epiphany of sorts in which he sees with clarity how he, his son, and their horses all fit together. As he untacks his horse, his thoughts come full circle and he realizes the importance of taking the time to appreciate all those things that help us find our place in the world. By the time he says thank you to his horse, we're all feeling grateful, too. Let's listen to All's Right with the World, written by Christopher Giglio and read by Taylor Autumn. There are times in life when a revelation strikes you so hard that it takes your breath away. The epiphany can be as subtle as the soft breeze that liberates a dandelion seed. Or it can blow you over with the force of a meteor. Or sometimes it can do both at the same time. Here's how my horse, Major, helped me change the way I see the world. One sunny day, my son Christopher and I went out for a trail ride into the woods behind our house. Christopher was riding Dusty, a brown 12-hand hackney pony with a classic high-stepping trot, while I rode Major, a 14-hand pony of the Americas. Our goal, as we picked our way through rocks and roots of the narrow New England path, was to reach a place we dubbed Ten Acres, a farmer's field oddly carved out in the middle of the forest. Whether it truly covered Ten Acres, I couldn't say. To get there, we'd have to cross a couple of miles of wickedly dense woodlands. Despite our relatively small mounts, we still had to do a lot of ducking to avoid the branches that reached out and clawed at our arms and faces. Neither of us minded the unhurried pace. It was that time of year, between late summer and fall, when the air is still warm but has just a hint of the chill to come. The sun was high, but the tall pines and stout oaks created a sort of dusk. Shadows and real things started to blend. Even Christopher and Dusty, out in front of me, seemed to have fused together and were seamlessly moving as one. As the horses muscled their way up a particularly rough slope, composed on ledge more than earth, I couldn't help but marvel at the sure-footedness. Nearly a thousand pounds of horse, plus me, balanced on top, all supported on a few square inches of hoof and yet Major had no trouble at all with the steep climb. Finally, we reached a nice, flat stretch with a soft carpet of golden pine needles. Christopher looked back over his shoulder and asked, Is it okay if we trot? Sure, I said, and gave a light squeeze with my legs. Major responded instantly. Trotting isn't my favorite gait with Major. His short stature makes for a bumpy ride, Nevertheless, we quickly covered the hundred yards of good footing and came to a stop. Eyes blinking in the sudden sunlight, we stood at the edge of a wide clearing in the woods. Dusty gave a snort and tossed his head as if to say, now this is more like it. Christopher and I sat and gazed out into the space. The enormous flat field was encircled by a wide dirt path like a racetrack. 
Giant trees drew themselves tightly around the whole thing, like colossal spectators pressed up against an ancient arena. With one more step, we would exit this world and enter another. Top-rated, award-winning UltraShield EX delivers proven fly protection that horse owners depend on. UltraShield EX is a long-lasting, grease-free fly spray ideal for the most challenging conditions. UltraShield EX won't back down. It lasts up to 17 days and kills and repels more than 70 species of insects to keep your horse comfortable and protected all season long. Learn more about hardworking, grease-free UltraShield EX at Absorbing.com. Christopher wasted no time. As Dusty's hooves smacked onto the powdery dirt path, a wisp of fine earth swirled up his foreleg like a tiny tornado. I could see the tension and excitement building in the muscles of the pony's hindquarters as he moved out into the open. Major and I followed. Both horses were wide-eyed and bobbed their heads up and down, taking in every bit of the unobstructed view. This is their element, I thought. Lots of room to move. I drew Major up alongside of Christopher and Dusty as we walked for quite a long time. The path was in exceptionally good condition. There were hardly any ruts or holes, and it was wide enough for four horses to ride abreast. The field itself was flat and grassy with no crops. It had been left fallow for the season. We stopped when we reached the point where we'd entered the open space. Both Christopher and I leaned back in our saddles and stretched, enjoying the peace and calm of the day. I drew in a deep breath, and as I exhaled, I heard myself saying, Let's gallop. Christopher flashed a wide smile. Really? Yeah, let's go around the field once. But before I could even finish, he and Dusty were off. I sat momentarily stunned at how fast that pony had broken from a dead stop. Quickly, I then tightened my reins and gave Major a solid squeeze with my calves. Major bumped off to a nice trot. I clucked and tucked both my heels further back. There was a brief hesitation as he processed the message, but then I felt the energy gathering under me like a deep ocean swell. Instinctively, my body braced, and I couldn't help holding my breath. Then, like an F-14 Tomcat catapulted from the deck of a carrier, we charged forward. By then, Dusty and Christopher were a good hundred feet ahead of us but with Major's longer stride, we gained on them steadily. As we pulled alongside them, Christopher looked up at us, grinning, and crouched down like a jockey. The pounding of my horse's hooves merged with the beating of my heart. It was heavenly. We finished the circuit, but neither horse showed any sign of wanting to stop. Nor did either one show any sign of wanting to pass the other. They moved in lockstep, like a perfectly matched team. The world was flashing past me in a smeary swirl of floral green and sky blue paisley. Yet the ride was eerily smooth and quiet. With every beat, Major was hammering gravity back down from where it came. Yet I felt no recoil, no shock. I was floating. And Major was too, like a giant seabird skimming over the ocean. He would occasionally dip his toe into the water using it like a tiller to adjust his course. I must confess, I was a little bewildered by the sheer power and strength he had tapped into. Finally, I brought Major down to a trot and then to a walk. Christopher and Dusty passed us and stopped at the fringe of the woods. Then they turned around and trotted jauntily back to us. At that moment, the meteor struck me. The horse has been evolving for millions of years, and we've been selectively breeding them for five or six millennia. Christopher and I were sitting on the culmination of countless generations of horses that had come before. We were seated at the very top of the equine pyramid, and the view was amazing. These animals have been honed into a perfect blend of power and speed, and Christopher and I had just been treated to some of the very best gifts a horse has to offer. As we turned back into the woods towards home, 
the insights continued to fall on me, gently, like the silvery dust from the meteor. The world around us is full of amazing life. Just there in the woods, the pines revealed their enormous height and extraordinary flexibility. Oaks displayed their tremendous strength and graceful age. From the greatest trees to the tiniest microscopic organisms, everything around us is at its apex of being. And what about us, I thought? Are we not part of all of this too? And if so, what are our gifts? I held this question in my mind all the way home. I had removed Major's tack back at the barn and was carefully brushing him down when it dawned on me. Our greatest gift is our ability to admire and appreciate the world around us. Some might argue that our greatest capacity is to love, but to that, I would say that love is really just the highest form of appreciation. I touched Major's soft ear and whispered, Thank you. You see, we horse people are luckier than most. We choose to work and live with these magnificent creatures who invite us to appreciate the natural world that we all get to share. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.